fly tying sessions. Uh, we're bringing a variety of uh, topics. I've got over 4,000 hours of videos going back all the way to in the 60s. And over the next six months, uh, we'll be bringing new and exciting things, plus things that are pertinent for today. A lot of my stuff has been back in the past, and what we're going to do is bring you forward with a lot of interesting possibilities. We're working on a weekly show that won't be live, that will be taped, and it will have a variety of different new things in fly fishing, reviews, thoughts from uh, all around the country and the world about fly fishing as we slowly, and I hope slowly, head out of this pandemic. Uh, the first uh, uh, tying sessions you'll have are going back to the basics, which uh, I did many, many years ago. Uh, muddler minnows, irresistibles, uh, all the old time patterns that have kept around. Uh, we'll also be talking about the para wolf, which has been one of my favorite flies and most successful flies with Umpqua Feather Merchants. So anyway, enjoy. Have a happy holiday. I mean, to me, the holidays start now and go all the way to the 15th. And some of you... Every winter, I have a chance to go down to New Zealand to test out the many fly patterns that I may have developed over the summer months. To go for the challenge of the large rainbows and brown trout while there's tons of snow back in the U.S. From these experiences in New Zealand, I had a chance to develop my fly fishing technique and some of the patterns that I've found to be the most successful here in the States. Fishing to large trout, sometimes in excess of six pounds, can help one appreciate a properly tied fly. Okay. 
Zane Grey and his famous book, Tales of Angler's El Dorado. He was the first to write about New Zealand. In the next fly that we're going to tie, it's called a kiwi, like the New Zealanders. The fly was influenced by a New Zealand fisherman that I guided in the 60s. What kind of fish does it take? Some awful big brown trout. Now let's show you some of the kiwi patterns. The pattern we're going to tie is called a pearlescent kiwi tied with flashaboo. So obviously we have to have some flashaboo minnow body material and some flashaboo strands. We're going to use rabbit strips half inch in diameter. Also some deer body hair for the head, some lead already attached to a bobbin and white heavy thread either a monocord or super thread. A 3x or 4x long shank streamer hook. And now on to the pearlescent kiwi. First of all we got a 3x long hook and we're going to wrap some lead right on top of it. Now the first pattern that we developed in the kiwi muddler was tied with a dubbed fur body ribbed with gold tinsel. Now we've modified the fly a little bit and still tie some of the old ones but we tie more of the new pearlescent pattern. And we're wrapping the lead on. Very important to have a good heavy lead. Notice how easy it is to put the lead on with the bobbin. It comes out nice and smooth and it doesn't get lead all over your fingers. Now we want to go down about three quarters of the way down the hook two-thirds to three-quarters, depending on how much room you want to leave for your head. Okay, notice how I pulled over that end. Uh, that sharp edge can cut uh, the pearlescent body material, so you've got to be careful. I take my thumb and completely tie it on. Okay, there's the bobbin, and I'll tell you, this is a new, unique way of wrapping lead, and you can buy lead already put onto spools. We're going to wrap the uh, thread right through the lead as tight as we can. There we go, look at that. All right, now, leave plenty of room at the end of the hook. Notice where the point is and the end of the barb. We've got to have room to tie in the uh, pearlescent uh, flashaboo body material. A little bit of uh, cement on the body. And you can be very liberal with the cement on this. Let it dry a little bit, and we pull out the cotton inner tubing of the body material. This happens to be a small uh, strand. And now we're going to tie it down right at the end. Now we want to leave a little bit of uh, the flashaboo hanging out. That's going to form a tail. and That'll help the rabbit fur from uh, wrapping under. Now we're going to do a half hitch or you can use the Mattarelli whip finish which works excellent for putting uh, whip finishes on the end of the, of the uh, body. There we go. Trim it out. And we're going to hit it with a little cement here. There we go. Again, the cement will help uh, the body uh, stiffen up and uh, keep it from unwrapping. That's a very uh, vulnerable point there, especially with the sharp teeth of the big brown trout you might catch on this fly. As I mentioned before, the original pattern did have a dub. That is twisting and spinning. You're not doing it right. Come up with our second clump, again, between our two fingers and our thumb, and put it right to the side, switching hands until it's right in there, shaking a little bit. Here we go, tight, tighter, tightest, and then maybe another one for good measure. Well, it's time to finish off our head and get ready for the haircut and trimming the head the way we want it. Just like in the muddler minnow, it's important to trim the head properly. Now, there's two effects we can get. But first of all, let's check our wing out to make sure it's not too long. We don't want it to uh, go under the hook like that. And so we're going to trim it out. I usually carry a pair of scissors when I'm fishing, just in case the wing may get too long. And we can always trim it out. There's the flashaboo in there, and we are going to trim out the head and make it a flat sculpin type head instead of a round ball head like which is on the muddler. Notice how we're coming from the eye of the fly and trimming it back. 
See how I flattened it out here? There we go, we're trimming it. And we're gonna end up with a diamond, kind of a delta-shaped head. Nice and flat. Sculpin shaped. The guard hairs can actually act as fins for the fly. So when you trim it out, you can leave some of the collar hairs just on the side and a little on the top and trim them off the bottom and it'll act as fins. A much more durable fin than a feather. The thing about the kiwi muddler that I think adds so much to its fishability is the image of movement. The way the fly projects the actual swimming of a minnow. The fisherman and his ability to move this fly can make it a killer for large trout. We save the best for last, the kiwi muddler.